welcome back guys. Today we're going to be talking about this scope right here that's on uh, this AR. I have already done a previous video uh, on this scope over here that Discovery Opt has done. Um, if you haven't seen that, you know, go check it out. This is essentially a Vortex Razor kind of clone, more or less. Uh, this is their um, 1 to 6 by 24 and this is a first focal plane scope. Um, or LPVO, uh, depending on how you want to, whatever you want to call it. I like this quite a bit. And so they asked me if I would like to review this scope that they have as well. And this is kind of a, if you're familiar with like the UTG bug buster or like a few of those other scopes like that, it's kind of the same general idea. It's, it's a three to 12 kind of compact scope. And you could use this, you know, for hunting, you could use this for long range precision. You could use it kind of for whatever you want. Um, but it's a good option for somebody who's looking for some good quality glass and you know kind of a high-end scope that has all the features but not at the high-end price so in case you're wondering here is all of the information i'm not going to read all this you can pause it and look at all that if you want but there is a model number um this is our hd model so looking through it um the glass on here is incredibly good um on this one as well the glass is incredibly clear um, if you're familiar with the SWFA, which is a very high end scope, uh, the one I have is a fixed 10 power and I think it was around $400. Their variable magnification ones are closer to a thousand. But anyways, those are really good scopes. Those are used, you know, similar, uh, by, I think different branches of the military use them. I want to say the Navy uses it for, for one of their rifles. Anyways, um, these are on par glass clarity, uh, with that scope. Um, from all of my testing, I haven't had a single problem with all these. I've taken them to the range on three or four different outings and shot them quite a bit. Um, if you're familiar, if you saw the video for this K tactical upper, uh, a lot of the zeroing and a lot of the grouping that I did, uh, on different ammo types where this upper was done with the scope. So anyways, I've done a fair amount of testing now, granted, did I bang these against a the truck or run them over with my truck? No, I didn't. Um, I don't think the majority of people are going to be doing that with their scopes. I think most people take care of their stuff. Um, that said, I've hit both of these, you know, with, um, uh, a toolbox. That's kind of my go-to cause I just have that in my range bag. Um, hit them both with my toolbox and it never lost zero. Um, so I haven't had a problem with that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a first focal plane scope is, it essentially means the reticle, um, it zooms in on the reticle. So you, on a second focal plane scope, your reticle, if it has like a bullet drop compensator or something like that, or range estimation, you know, something along those lines, it's only useful at the max magnification. Usually some of them might, you know, be somewhere else, but generally speaking, the max magnification, once you zoom it in, that's where your bullet drop um, estimations are going to be on. If you use it on one X, they're not going to be on a first focal plane scope like these it's going to be on no matter what magnification level you have it on. So a first focal plane scope has a, a much better advantage in my opinion on that. So depending on what you're looking for, you know, you may want a second focal plane uh, because you want the reticle to do a certain thing at certain magnifications, or you might want a first focal plane. That's completely up to you. Use your preference. I prefer a first focal plane, but generally they're always a lot more expensive than the second focal planes. And that's where this one shines and why I agreed uh, to take a look at it. And again, full disclosure, they sent this out to me. Um, I didn't pay anything for it. So it, that doesn't influence what I say, but figure I would throw it out there because some of y'all will wonder. Um, I was interested in this because I was kind of looking for a gun or a scope to go on this specific AR. Um, I kind of look at this as almost like kind of a DMR um, type of build. It's a, you know, 16 inch barrel. It's incredibly accurate. Um, it's very controllable. So I wanted something like that for So here's for the this. scope up close. Um, you can kind of see all the different markings on there. Um, it does have a good amount of features, which I'll go over here in a second. Um, one thing I don't like about it, and I'll kind of go straight into that right off the bat, is the scope rings that it comes with are fairly cheap. Uh, I think this one comes with the same scope rings. They work. Um, they're not great though but they're not my favorite. So they kind of feel a little cheap whenever you tighten them down. It feels like if you were to, you know, tighten them, wrench them down, it feels like they would strip. They may not, but I don't necessarily trust these, you know, all the way. I tighten them down and they held just fine. They have held zero, uh, but they don't look like, you know, the greatest quality rings, which for the price, I mean, that's not a big deal because honestly, I'm going to replace it with something like this Burris, you know, QD mount or something similar anyway. So it comes with scope rings. You can use them if you want to. You don't have to. If you don't want to, that's fine. But they're essentially free. So 
that's just a minor criticism. So all the things it comes with, it does come with this uh, little sunshade. So it also comes with these little flip up scope caps, which work fine. Uh, if you don't like those, you don't have to leave them on there. They come off fairly easily. I'd prefer the rear one um, be a little bit more snug than it is, um, but that's just, it is what it is. So if you don't like them, you know, take them off. But also you can put on this little, if you want to call it flash hider or uh, just kind of a sunshade. I've seen them call different things, assuming I can find the threads. But the threads are fine, um, as in small. So if you want a larger scope, some people just like the look of a bigger scope on their, you know, if you have like an AR-10 or something, a small scope may look a little weird on there. I don't know, this may balance it out. If you don't care about aesthetics, you know, you may not want it, but it also blocks the sun. So if it's really, really bright and you know, you're getting too much glare or something, uh, this could be useful. Um, it can also help uh, work a little bit like a, a kill flash as in, you know, if the sun's reflecting off your lens, you know, might give away your position. This will help a little bit with that. Um, you may or may not like that, that's fine, but it does come with it. Um, it also comes with, obviously, uh, your standard clean cloth and Allen key, and it also comes with their standard warranty, which is basically the lifetime of the owner, and I think a year for the electronics on the inside of it. So again, you can pause that, read it if you want to, that's fine. Um, but now to the scope itself. So it does have your standard, just eye, eye relief right here. You know, you can adjust this to your specific eyes. Um, so if you want, you know, better or less, it basically kind of zooms in or zooms out the reticle. At least that's what it looks like to my eye. Um, it has a, your standard three to 12 on here for magnification wise. And I will say like, it's actually smooth as butter. It's perfect in stiffness. A lot of the times, you know, you're really cranking down on that thing and it just barely moves. This one is stiff enough to where it's not going to get bumped but it's not too stiff to where it's a pain in the butt to adjust. So good job on that. Um, one thing I'm not a huge fan of, but I mean, you can get past it, um, is a battery compartment, which is this outer ring right here. So it just unscrews and your battery compartment's under there. Um, it's easy to accidentally loosen that whenever you're trying to use the, um, the illumination on the side. So your illumination knobs right here, as you can tell, it goes from one to six and it has off knobs. Again, they're hard to turn, so it has off knobs. So there it would be off. Now it would be on one, off, two, and so on and so forth, all the way to six. And then here's your parallax adjustment. The parallax adjustment is actually really, really nice. It goes all the way from 10, as you can see, all the way out to infinity. And I think it goes from two to five to infinity, which is what that little mark right there means. And the, clarific the clarity, not clarification, the clarity, on the glass is superb. Um, I'll show you what it looks like, you know, at the range out to, I think 810 yards and at 300 yards, just so you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, but the clarity on this thing is phenomenal. So the back end of it, I like um, the side compartments. I don't have necessarily a problem with, except the battery cap. I don't know how you would fix that. Maybe you could just make this knob a little bit easier to turn and then you wouldn't accidentally. Now, if you're purposefully trying to turn this, it's not a big deal, but I have found myself accidentally turning the battery cap whenever I'm trying to adjust the illumination. There we go. Sorry, that's as good as it's going to get. But again, that's 810 yards and that's a steel silhouette. So I'm thrilled with that clarity. Again, it's overcast right now, but that clarity is superb. Um, I have another scope that's about $400. I think it's made by SWFA and it's a really clear scope too. I would say this one's on par with it, honestly. But again, hopefully that gives you a good idea. And here is 300 yards. Again, 300 yards, uh, 12 power magnification. Let me show you what it looks like on 3X just so you can get a better idea. All right, that's what it looks like on the lowest power magnification. Again, you can see just how clear that is. It is ridiculously clear. I am uh, absolutely amazed by this. And the eye box on 3X goes back pretty far, so. Again, gives you a pretty good idea of what it looks like. All right, this is just the PMC 556 stuff. Um, it's not the best on the planet, but it shot fairly well out of this gun. So we're at this upper. So I should be able to get hits just fine. And consistently on like with that steel case stuff. Love just left. But that's the first round. Never got the first round of new ammo type. Made of a rookie mistake. Just left safe spot. All right. So let's go 
back to the right. There we go there, and it was a little bit high. Let's go down about here. Wish we're getting back to where the original zero was, so I must have zeroed it closer to this stuff. If I remember right, the steel case stuff was like way off low right or something. You'll have to watch the tactical video to see that. Let's see what the uh, brightness setting looks like. So the sun is mostly out. There's a very thin cloud cover, so it's not pure as the sun. But let me turn that on and see what it looks like. One thing I don't like is the battery compartment. Um, oh man, that it's stiff. Okay, so in daylight, yeah, I'm not seeing that reticle illuminated daylight now if I aim over in the darkest section I kind of see uh, that red dot it's kind of centered but just know it's not going to be um, daylight bright on the illumination so you may like that you may not that's fine it's meant for more low light situations which honestly I would never use the, uh, the illuminated reticle during the daytime anyways I think red blends in more with the environment than the black does good you may have a different opinion but that's just fine all right let's shoot at 300 again hit. let's aim for that little bitty guy see if i can hit him oh just underneath him <laughs> i don't know if you heard that or not I hit a little silhouette that's about this big. So, to show how accurate this upper is, let's see if I can do it again. Hit it again. So this upper likes that PMC stuff. Again, I'm hitting a silhouette the size of a softball, 300 yards, which may not be, you know, the, the best accuracy feat ever, but for me, I'm thrilled. I think I should have one more shot. Hit it again. All right. So, in case you're wondering, a scope that did not hold zero would not be able to do that. So, zero holds just fine. The clarity on this thing is superb. Now, granted, the eye box on 12 power is not fantastic, but I mean, I got I got a good amount of mirage out there from the sun and coming off this uh, the heat off this barrel. I can see it just without looking through the scope. So. But that aside, the clarity on this optic is fantastic. I'm looking out at 700 yards right now, and I can easily see that target enough to take shots at it. Granted, I wouldn't with 5.56, but you know, you do you. But I can see 700, and then there's another target, 750. I think there's an 800 yard. Yeah, there's an 810 yard target way down there at the tree line. And I'll show you what this looks like clarity wise here in a second once the mirage from the heat of the barrel goes away. But yeah, I could easily take a shot at that 810 yards with a cartridge that's capable of doing that. This one's not, I'd be lobbing around something over. But let me show you what it looks like through the scope. Now, if you're wondering about the battery life on this thing, um, it's actually pretty good. Now, I accidentally left this thing on and I left it on the it wasn't the brightest setting. I think it was like four or five. And I did this again on accident because I went to the range one time and just didn't turn it off. And I left it on for about a week and it still stayed on whenever I finally came back to it. And I looked at it, I was like, oops. Now granted, it wasn't, you know, that bright anymore. It was basically about the same uh, brightness as setting one. So if that gives you any idea of what the battery life is, you know, kind of there you go. The battery life on things like this are not great because they use a good amount of power and that battery is fairly small. So battery life, I would say, is on par with pretty much everybody else out there. Um, one thing I do really like about this scope is the locking turrets. So if you want to lock it, all you do is push down, and it will not turn either direction. If you want to adjust 
for wind at your elevation. You can hear that click. It is very tactile and audible. Like you, those are really, really good clicks for a scope. Same thing on this one. Like you're not going to be guessing on some scopes, especially cheaper ones. Uh, you're going to be, you know, turning it and you're like, did I turn it? I can't tell. I'm not quite sure. It reminds me, I mean, EOTech is actually kind of that way too. So shame on you, EOTech, make it more audible, but this does not have that problem whatsoever. Um, they work fantastic. And in order to adjust it, once you get it to say, you know, you pull it out and say, this is actually your zero. All you do is loosen this little top cap right here. The whole thing will pop off and you rotate it around you know, to where uh, this is now your zero and then you screw this back down. So that's how you adjust zero in case you were wondering. And the design of this is very compact and it's very, very, um, it's a very good design. I don't have any problems with it. All right, so the last thing again that I'll mention is the reticle and it's a uh, Millrad reticle. Um, it has kind of like a Christmas tree look to it. Whenever you zoom in, um, you'll be able to see it. Uh, I'll show a picture here, kind of what it looks like. I like it because same with this one. Um, they both have similar reticles in that they're very, very fine lines and dots, which means it doesn't obscure your target. And I like that a lot. So, I mean, if you're looking for this to use um, for like, you know, a big reticle uh, just to put on something and pull the trigger, this isn't going to be the scope for you. This one is more for precision, which honestly is what I would use the scope for. Anyways, I would use something like this and then use like an offset red dot or, you know, you could buy one of these, you know, that has a little Picatinny rail section on top and put a red dot on top if you wanted to. I prefer an offset, um, but that's what I plan on doing with this at some point. I don't really put a whole lot of stock into 1Xs for, you know, up close stuff um, simply because, I don't know, my eyes don't like them. I prefer a red dot. That's just me. Um, the battery, one thing I forgot to mention is the battery is just your standard 2032 battery. I'll show you on here and it just goes in just like that. Um, no problems with that whatsoever. You're going to get a standard battery life like with most other scopes. Now, the illumination on here is one thing I forgot to mention and I will mention right, now. So hopefully you can uh, see that it illuminates the bottom numbers as well. Um, but in the daylight, all you see is that little center dot in the middle, that bright dot is really all it gets illuminated. Now at night um, and at dusk, you can see the rest of that. It gets illuminated fairly well. It's not as bright as what it looks like through here. Um, but you can still see all those things. But what I really like about this is during the daytime, if it's overcast, if it's pure sunlight, it's not bright enough to see. But if it's overcast or, you know, dusk or whatever, it basically has a very, very pinpoint, just bright red dot right in the center that you can use kind of as a red dot. So I like that. Whenever I was doing um, groupings for another video, uh, I was able to use that. And I really, really liked it because it made it stand out from the red center bullseye on my target because it was so bright. So I like that. So for 190 to $200, somewhere in there, I think this is an excellent choice because that UTG Bug Buster scope that I did, uh, I can't remember how long ago that was, a couple of years back. Anyways, it was around $90, I think, when I bought it. Now it's you know closer to 120 or something like that. It's a little bit more expensive than it should be. And honestly, this is a much better quality scope and it's first focal plane and it actually has locking turrets. The UTG has weird like skin, uh, or not skin, but skin spin uh twisting ones that lock it which work but they're not the best the clarity on this is just vastly superior honestly this is the quality of this to me is more like a five six seven hundred dollar scope um but again it's only two hundred dollars so if you're looking for a three to twelve i honestly would think this is hard to beat i was very very impressed with just all the features and the clarity and everything about again this hopefully scope. this gives you a pretty good idea of kind of the specs and how this thing performed again i'll show in some or put in some footage of me shooting at the range and i was able to easily see out to 810 yards to where i could have taken a shot now granted the ar i was shooting with I mean, there's no way I would probably, well, one, I wouldn't be able to hear if I even hit the steel target anyways at 810 yards. You're not going to hear that. Um, 2556 isn't, it, I don't care what you say. It's not effective out to that range unless you're using very, very specific, you know, barrel lengths and ammo types, all that kind of stuff. Um, but clarity wise for the scope, I could have done it with the scope if it say I put this on like a 308 or something like that. So this scope is more than capable, I would say out to a thousand yards um, based on how clear it is. And again, I'll insert some footage you can see, but I mean, the thing is just ridiculously clear. Um, all the scopes I've used to date have not been as clear as this. And the fact that it goes to 12 magnification power um, doesn't hurt. 
Um, so again, if you guys have any questions about this scope uh, specifically, let me know. If you guys have any um, comments or random questions about something else, let me know. I Again, I answer all the comments uh, down below that I see. Sometimes I don't get notifications for some reason, um, but all the notifications I get, uh, I click on it usually that day and answer the questions. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Again, that really, really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, click down if I have any Amazon uh, links down below. Click on those. Those help, you know, give me like a whole cent or two, you know, anytime you buy something on Amazon. It helps fund the channel. And that's uh, whenever stuff isn't sent to me, that's how I buy stuff. Um, and I would say probably 80 to 90% of the stuff I review on this channel is actually stuff I buy myself. So this channel um, doesn't actually really make money. I just do it kind of as a hobby. So anyways, I hope you all appreciate this video and have a good one.